हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस क्लास लेट अस स्टडी अबाउट ग्लूटेन फ्री प्रोडक्ट्स पर्टिकुलरली ग्लूटेन फ्री ब्रेड्स एंड पास्ता इन फैक्ट दिस ग्लूटेन फ्री प्रोडक्ट्स आर कमर्शियली अवेलेबल नाउ इन अमेरिकन मार्केट्स यूरोपियन मार्केट्स एक्सेट्रा इन इंडिया आल्सो इट इज बिकमिंग इनक्रीजिंगली पॉपुलर डे बाई डे सो before going to the discussion on gluten free products let us first understand what is gluten actually the gluten is a protein found in cereals like wheat rye triticale and barley it starts as two protein strands called glutenin and gliadin when wheat flour or such other materials containing these glutenin and gliadin are mixed with water and they are given the mechanical force during the kneading process that are by kneading then these glutenin and gliadin they interact with each other and a coherent network structure of gluten is formed that is in this structure the starch and other uh, molecules or other materials which are present in the four floor components of the floor etc water molecule they are embedded so in fact it is the characteristic protein of wheat which uh, makes a wheat a very very ideal ingredient for preparation of bakery products like bread pasta biscuits etc etc all right so as i told you when wheat flour is added with water and it is worked mechanically that is when the force is applied then there is interaction between these molecules and this gluten develops and this a glue like property that is the gluten makes the dough elastic and gives the product bakery products its ability to rise when baked during baking process it also provides a chewy and satisfying texture to the product the bread making quality of the wheat flour depends on both the quantity of these glutenin and gliadin present as in general the quantity of the wheat protein as well as quality of the wheat protein the gluten proteins contribute around 80 to 85 percent of the total wheat proteins and they are the major storage protein of wheat so as i told you the functionally distinct groups of gluten proteins are the monomeric gliadins and polymeric glutenins and these are largely insoluble in water or in dilute salt solutions the gliadin fraction has been reported to contribute to the viscous property and extensibility of wheat dough whereas the glutenin factor has been considered or it has uh, been known to give or uh, have a prominent role in providing elasticity or in providing strengthening of the dough so in this uh, picture we have shown you that is the structure of gluten right there is a this gluten both gliadin portion gliadin portion and glutenin process they have unique amino acid uh, composition amino acid structure and they contain about uh, uh, a comparatively high content of hydroxyl amino acids and glutamines and this high hydroxyl amino acids contents of gluten contributes to its uh, water binding properties hydrogen bonding you can see here in these two gliadin fraction and glutenin factors they are interacted with the hydrogen bond and network coherent structure as i told you all right so this hydrogen bonding between uh, glutamine and hydroxyl residues of the gluten polypeptide contributes to its uh, cohesion and adhesion property and this is very in fact that uh, how much water uh, will be there and the even mechanical force applied that is the uh, kneading parameters etc that uh, they uh, are necessary proper kneading and proper uh, amount of water 
are important for the proper development of gluten. In fact, in ideal characteristics, in ideal case for a good uh, development of bread, at least the gluten should have the glutenin and gliadin properly mixed in 1 is to 1 proportion and that can be controlled by proper kneading conditions and other factors. Okay. So, you have now that is what is gluten. In fact, it is a very, very important uh, constituent or component uh, and uh, which makes the wheat flour or wheat a unique and very, very uh, important material for the preparation of bakery products. That is the, it is the gluten which gives the viscoelastic properties, dough handling characteristics, dough uh, water absorption and all those that is, it becomes a suitable raw material. So, now why do we need gluten free products? There are various uh, wheat uh, products and which are liked by the consumers and they have very high acceptability and they are uh, prepared even uh, in the homes and uh, throughout the world, large population of the world, uh, they consume wheat products. But of late now data is available that uh, the gluten has some uh, that uh, important role particularly it results into some sort of uh, diseases or malfunctions of the system in the body and that celiac disease one is a one very very common auto disease which is because of the auto remove response of individual to the gluten that is the there are maybe certain individuals when they consume gluten because of the gluten there is some disorder develops in those individuals similarly certain individuals uh, may uh, have gluten intolerance sensitivity or allergen, allergic immune, immune response to the allergens or ADHD or ostrich. This is the problem of digesting protein found gluten and casein causes an opiate like effect on the brain that is ostrich and even there may be some other autoimmune development issues including thyroid issues etc. due to the consumption of diet containing gluten. So, the celiac disease as I told you it is a an inflammatory autoimmune condition of the small intestine that damages the small intestine and interferes with the absorption of nutrient from food. And this uh, autoimmune condition or inflammatory condition of the small intestine is basically triggered by gluten in genetically susceptible uh, individuals and people suffering from celiac disease in fact do not tolerate gluten and the medical report says that for such individual who are susceptible to gluten who cannot tolerate gluten or which are, uh, are uh, reported to have celiac disease or such other problems for them they have to completely avoid gluten in their diet and that is where the gluten free products are needed. That is for such individual who have problem with gluten uh, consumption that is the product containing gluten consumption, celiac disease etcetera. So, for them gluten free products are needed. So, gluten free formulations are developed generally using maize and rice flours often combined with corn, potato or cassava starches along with uh, proteins and hydrocolloids for binding agent. Because this one that is the product to uh, from the non gluten containing raw material has been the one major ingredient for conversion of the, the to gluten free product. But there it has a important because the viscoelastic properties are such other uh, properties cohesiveness bind uh, the uh, wittiness or other uh, properties of the material all right that is a uh, uh, which is contributed by the gluten into the wheat products that lacks in the 
non gluten containing raw material so by adding certain additives hydrocolloids etc or by using appropriate processes or uh, having a pro proper selections of the material etc these gluten free products so are developed that is uh, these products that is the which the in certain ingredients hydrocolloids etc which can mimic the properties which are provided by the gluten that becomes very very important okay so gluten free products generally uh, they have uh, lower fiber and micronutrients in comparison to its wheat containing counterparts because it is usually made from refined flour and are starches that are not generally in this dar fortifiers a number of nutrient dense alternative raw materials in combination with conventional gf flours and starches increase variety and improve nutritional quality of the gf bread right in this slide just i have tried to give you that uh, the materials that is cereal flours and starches which can be used for the preparation of gluten free products like conventional flours like refined flours and starches of rice corn flour or corn starch potato starch cassava starch etc or alternative non gluten containing raw materials like non gluten cereals like rice maize sorghum millet pseudo cereals such as buckwheat amaranth quinoa or roots and tuber that is cassava and yam legumes like soya chickpea beans lentil pea or other grains like flax seed chia seed chestnut unripe banana etc these can be used for preparation of gluten free products so as i told you there are challenges in the preparation of gluten free product development because the absence of gluten often results in a liquid batter rice is conventionally traditionally used for preparation of uh, uh, the gluten free products even bread i will tell you little later that we have worked on also that is prepared bread uh, using rice flour but from the rice it is uh, not possible to prepare a dough uh, similar uh, in consistency and viscoelastic property as we get from the wheat dough because in the wheat gluten is there which contributes to these property but from rice we normally get a batter and this batter in fact can result in baked bread with a crumbling texture poor color and there may be other post baking defects bread dough without gluten can only retain gas if another hydrocolloid uh, replaces the gluten because that is very important gluten provides the unique texture it has a proper gas retention characteristic during uh, fermentation or process or leavening process the carbon dioxide gas which is produced in the general bread baking process that finally during baking process a part of that uh, gas is retained in the structure which gives the bread its unique crumb and other texture rather characteristics but in the gluten free raw materials the absence of gluten poses a challenge to this effect so there should be some agent either hydrocolloid etc should be added in the formulation or the rice starch or such other uh, starches their characteristics should be suitably changed so that they can hold some of the gas so are their gas retaining properties water absorption characteristics are significantly improved like as like uh, unlike uh, wheat gluten gluten free raw materials are not able to form viscoelastic network upon hydration although it can be made functional at a higher temperature in products from gluten free raw materials the starch to provide or to improve its properties to contribute to the properties of the product that is starch need to be gelatinized to act as a glue so the gluten free bread i told you the development of a good quality gluten free bread is a serious task therefore many researchers have investigated the substitution of gluten by ingredients which are able to mimic 
its functional properties. The majority of the commercially available gluten free breads, as I told you, they are inferior in the quality to their gluten containing counterparts, although it has been a challenge and researchers are uh, working uh, that to improve the quality and mimic that is the prepare gluten free bread quality and characteristics as close as possible to the wheat bread. That is, gluten free bread have a relatively shorter shelf life. The crumb is wet after baking, it sticks together and quickly becomes dry. So, crumbliness is a problem, it becomes rough, it becomes crumbly, disintegrates. So, in the gluten free bread, these are some of the issues which need to be uh, taken, taken care of by appropriate processing and appropriate use of the hydrocolloids, etc. As I told you, rice flour is increasingly becoming popular as a substitute for wheat flour in the preparation of products which are consumed by wheat intolerant or celiac patients. It is the most suitable cereal grain flour for the production of GF product due to its bland taste, white color, its digestibility and hyperallergenic properties. Because of this, it is a, taken as a, considered as a good raw material for preparation of a gluten free product. In order to achieve a suitable consistency of bread making, rice flour dough requires a comparatively high or rather very high hydration, it needs more as I told you that is it uh, is converted to be in a sort of batter and the addition of large quantities of water leads to considerable improvement in the dough behavior during mixing that is high, it provides higher stability to the dough behavior or the batter which is obtained. Even blends of buckwheat and rice flours in the presence of hydrogenated vegetable fat have also been found to uh, good material. They give good gluten free bread having good sensory attributes. Soya flour and soya products have been used to increase the protein content as well as to improve the structural properties of gluten free products. Soya has a positive impact on gluten free bread quality. The inclusion of soya bean or soya flours increases the nutritional value and water absorption characteristics of the gluten free bread dough. Regarding the production of gluten free bread, that is a, it makes that is the production of gluten free bread differs significantly from that of the wheat bread, that is the process of production. Like wheat bread, traditionally it is made that is the wheat flour is taken of appropriate protein content, water is added, it is mixed properly, a dough is made of proper consistency and the dough and in the formulation of course yeast and other ingredients are added, uh, salt and all those things. So, the during fermentation that is the yeast acts and carbon dioxide gas is liberated and there is a leavening or rising of the dough and after the fermentation or proofing the dough is divided or molded a proper size and then it is finally baked. But all these steps are not necessary because you we do not get a good quality dough here. So, may be that uh, molding etc dividing or some of the even well, fermentation some of the processes may require to be changed or their conditions might re require to be changed. So, process of GF bread production consists of mainly mixing, proofing and baking. Most of the gluten free breads tend to contain a high water levels and have a more fluid like structure. In addition, they require shorter mixing, proofing and baking times than their uh, normal wheat counterparts. So, in this process, in fact, it is a comparison of the wheat based uh, bread as well as non-wheat or gluten free bread containing not. So, for the wheat flour bread, as I told you, flour 
वाटर साल्ट फैट ईस्ट एंड सम इम्प्रूवर्स दे आर एडेड मिक्सड प्रॉपरली एंड दे आर गिवेन रेस्ट एट थर्टी टू फोर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस एट्टी टू नाइन्टी परसेंट रिलेटिविटी फॉर अबाउट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स सो दैट इज द राइजिंग आर द डेवलपमेंट एंड फाइनली इट इज डिवाइडेड आर मोल्डेड इन टू पैन एंड फाइनली प्रूवड दैट इज सेकेंड फर्मेंटेशन एट थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस एट्टी फाइव परसेंट रिलेटिव ह्यूमिडिटी एंड फाइनली इट इज बेक्ड एट अप्रोप्रिएट टेम्परेचर एंड कूल्ड एंड पैकेज इन द केस ऑफ ग्लूटन फ्री ब्रेड प्रिपरेशन दैट इज द मटेरियल्स आर टेकन एज पर द फॉर्मुलेशन दैट इज लाइक ग्लूटन फ्री फ्लोर राइस फ्लोर एक्सेट्रा वाटर साल्ट सुगर एंड हाइड्रोकोलाइट्स हियर देर वाज इम्प्रूवर हियर हाइड्रोकोलाइट्स एंड ईस्ट सो हियर मिक्सिंग इज नॉर्मली ए वेरी शॉर्ट मिक्सिंग अबाउट टू मिनट्स एंड आफ्टर मिक्सिंग दैट इज द फार्मुलेशन टेकन इट इज ए फाइव हंड्रेड ग्राम आर एट हंड्रेड ग्राम आर वन थाउजेंड दैट इज स्केल टू फार्मुलेशन पुट इन ए पैन एंड दिस पैन इज पुट इन द रूम वेयर थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस टेम्परेचर एंड एटी फाइव परसेंट रिलेटिव ह्यूमिडिटी इज मेनटेन एंड फॉर थर्टी मिनट्स सो फॉर सम द ईस्ट टू एक्ट एंड फाइनली इट इज बेक्ड एंड द ब्रेड आपटेन एंड कूल्ड एंड पैकेज and this is uh, in fact uh, at iit khalapur in our laboratory we have developed uh, gluten free bread using uh, rice as a raw material and the pitch in the pictures you see the pictures of the bread these are the bread samples of the bread prepared in our laboratory using rice flour. so what we take we take uh, rice uh, flour and this rice flour is given some microwave treatment to modify its starch and other components are little bit modified so the first it is a patented process so i may not uh, disclose the major things but general i will give you that what are the different steps that is the modification of the rice starch characteristics by microwave treatment and then in that addition of some citri fiber that is citri fiber is used as a fat replacer and it improves the water retention ability during of the dough or batter during baking and this microwave treatment of the rice flour provides improvement in the functionality of the material or starch or gluten like behavior it gives then unique combination of hydrocolloids and modified starch for structure binding that is the now this uh, modified starch are partially gelatinized rice flour and normal rice flour they are mixed and some hydrocolloids are also added citri fiber is, so a formulation is prepared and this here this combination gives the improved crust and crumb structure and finally it is uh, baked at uh, under usual conditions like those of the normal bread so development of bread from the uh, batter in this case let me tell you that here we got batter not the bread but this from the batter we have prepared this bread which you can see in the picture so it has a good gas retaining capacity capability okay. so now the next important product is the gluten free pasta pasta is a, probably the simplest cereal based product it is becoming increasingly popular among the masses even in our country younger people like pasta better than the bread and other uh, chapati is star conventionally made wheat products the pasta consists of a mix of flours or semolina with water it may also contain egg it can be classified according to the water content processing type and are shaping there is different shapes different types different raw materials are used for the preparation of pasta and accordingly the pasta are classified with high protein content as well as strong gluten network is required for obtaining pasta with good consistency with a proper cooking performance the key factor for the quality of the pasta is the rapid stiffening of the well developed gluten network which is able to entrap 
swollen starch granules <coughs> pasta is prepared by as i told you that there are four steps first is the hydration step where the flour is uh, mixed with water that is and this mixing so the hydration and then mixing the mixing helps in the development of the gluten network in the similar way as you have seen in the case of bread then finally the next is the shaping and cutting and for this basically the extrusion process is used or extruders may be twin screw extruders are better or even single screw extruders also can be done but twin screw extruders or even pasta extruders are also available so even low temperature extruder high temperature extruder these become extrusion conditions they have effect on the quality of the pasta okay and then finally after it is given shape the next step is the drying so during processing particularly during mixing extrusion drying etc the pasta undergoes complex modifications during mixing and shaping these are the two important steps in the processing where the modifications caused by heating as well as water uptake and these changes in the protein and structure and protein structure and starch and all the materials it determines the different effects both at the microscopic level as well as at the molecular level so two main phenomena take place during processing of pasta as i told you that is the one is the gluten network development during mixing and then water diffusion inside pasta and temperature rise during extrusion the temperature rise during extrusion lead to the gelatinization of starch and which gives the desirable strength and other cooking improved desired cooking characteristics to the pasta so you can see here that is a here two pictures are there that is conventional wheat pasta and gluten free pasta so in the conventional wheat pasta where the gluten is there uh, wheat gluten is the glue it provides the characteristic elasticity and other characteristics and the protein glue network provides the framework of pasta and in this starch is a filler that is this is smaller or the starch this is they are embedded in the gluten network or protein network and it is the similar to that in the case of uh, wheat bread also similar type of the thing that i told you that is gluten protein network is there gliadin gluten in etc right and starch and other even added yeast carb yeast and salt and other components which are added they get embedded in the water molecule whereas in the case of gluten free pasta you can see here starch provides the glue and protein and other smaller proteins and some other components they are in the network frame so accordingly that it becomes important that it is by extrusion or by other appropriate uh, hydrocolloids that may be added so that these uh, uh, glue property properties of the starch are suitably changed are suitably kind of modified to provide the uh, needed functionality there is a small protein patches here <coughs> okay so they they are small protein patches they are embedded of course they are not very very uh, significant in this case so it is the important thing is that in this case starch is the uh, glue so flour used for gluten free pasta the same type of flour which uh, are used for gluten free bread making they can also be used for gluten free pasta A rice flour is increasingly being used but other cereals etc can be used but the important thing in the similar manner here also the characteristics need to be changed this is a, a process flow chart for the preparation of gluten free pasta which uh, has been developed in my laboratory at iit kharagpur right so in this what we do we take rice flour water chickpea flour and that is some hydrocolloids gluten alter alternatives xanthan gum etc so this formulation has been standardized 
we have tried different combinations and permutations and these ingredients as per the formulation they are mixed properly and then it is of course uh, passed through 200 mesh size to ensure the uniformity of the mix and then these uh, material then they are passed through to uh, uh, twin screw extruder where is the twin screw extruder feeder speed is maintained at 100 rpm and extruder uh, runs at extruder barrel runs at 300 rpm and the temperature inside the extruder is maintained 60 degrees celsius so at the a ribbon type die we have used although there are different it can different types of dies at different types of cutter can be used to get the desired types and size of the gf pasta right so the finally uh, this is the picture of the ribbon type uh, gluten free pasta which we get and this pasta is then dried at a temperature of about 55 to 65 degree celsius for uh, overnight maybe 24 hours or so all right to dry the pasta to a moisture content of 12 percent final 10 to 12 percent final moisture content and the, for the giving for getting desired characteristics that are in fact low temperature drying low temperature long uh, time drying for pasta is uh, recommended then after that packaging uh, suitable packaging or for its packaging, the material should be that packaging material such etc. should be of appropriate quality so that it does not reabsorb moisture etc. during storage. So, that is the technology for the preparation of gluten free pasta developed in our. So, these are there are now novel technologies for uh, preparation of gluten free pasta like these products which I have. Uh, told you or which we have seen so far that is the in most of the cases the non gluten containing raw materials are used for the preparation of gluten free product. But the best thing might be that to modify the protein content of the that is glutenin and glidin and the gluten network that the of the wheat flour itself in fact lot of research uh, is going on in this direction. So, enzymatic approach can be followed like uh, having the uh, that is enzymes action of uh, uh, prolyl endopeptidase is PEP enzymes which can cleave which can break the peptide linkages the peptide bonds of the proline and glutamine residues in the glidin and glutenin and then this becomes that is the toxicity or the problem that is the because human gastrointestinal proteases they are unable to degrade these proteins to that amino acid level. So, if it can be done that is the by using enzymatic approach to break these bonds break the peptides so that their uh, effect of causing toxicity or diseases etcetera can be eliminated. However, this is may be a good approach, but when these peptides are broken, how these floors, how these amino acids etcetera, how these peptides are behaving, how they are behaving in the giving the viscoelastic properties and other characteristics of the gluten that needs to be seen established. In fact, serial germination can also degrade uh, immune stimulatory gluten peptides. Uh, and thereby diminish the toxic effects. Lactobacilli are known to possess a complex protease system which can hydrolyze various proline residues of the gluten. So, these enzymatic approaches, bacterial action, bacterial enzymes, etcetera, or germination, etcetera, they are reported to be a good step or they can help in reducing the toxic effect or allergenicity or other such other effects of the gluten but what will be its effect on viscoelastic and other characteristics of the dough and in the bakery products it needs to be seen. The second approach another approach may be sourdough fermentation. Sourdough is a mixture of flour and water uh, fermented with starter cultures of lactic acid bacteria and yeast 
which are either deliberately added or they originate as a contaminant in the flow. So, sourdough fermentation enhances dough properties, it improves volumes, texture, flavor and nutritional value etcetera. Sourdough fermentation can be successfully applied for improving the dough handling characteristics of the gluten free batters. In this that is just a schematic sequence of the protein degradation during fermentation by sourdough, uh, sourdough process let lactic acid bacterial culture can be added into the floor and this uh, when this culture enzymes containing this culture they act on the floor and there is a gradual acidification of the dough activation of the indigenous enzymes it finally results into the proteolysis of the or breakdown of the floor proteins and release of peptides. Lactic acid bacteria also directly can hydrolyze that intracellular peptides all right, and they release the peptide and with ultimately finally it may result into the formation of precursors of flavor com compounds and by modifying the viscoelastic properties of the dough. So, the, apart from this enzymatic approach sourdough fermentation, the high pressure application of high pressure may be another potential way for improving the functionalities of the starch and other components or they can lead to the formation of the in the formation of the gluten free products that high pressure can be one of the promising technologies. Uh, in high pressure in the range of 100 to 1000 mega Pascal can be applied to modify functional properties of proteins and starches in gluten free floors. The high pressure causes starch to swell and gelatinize without the disruption of granule integrity which is normally seen during the heating processes. So, the extent of swelling depends upon the applied pressure treatment time and temperature and concentration and time of the starch. So, these are the some of the approaches by which even the either the wheat this protein and their functionality can be improved or their the toxic effect or other such effects of the glute, wheat gluten can be lowered down or the functionality of the non gluten containing raw material or their starch and proteins can be modified to mimic the properties exhibited by the gluten in the wheat flour. So, these are the, of the approaches that is these materials can be used to develop gluten free products and either by using non gluten containing raw material or by suitably modifying the characteristics of the wheat protein so that the its toxicity or allergenicity is reduced. But one thing is very clear as the rep literature report says that is the, the persons who are gluten intolerant for them a gluten free diet is a must. So, therefore, for such people and the number of celiac disease or gluten intolerant people are reported to be increasing day by day even in our country in India also number of celiac persons are reported are the significant may be I think about 3 in every 1000 are reported to be celiac in our country. So, for such people the gluten free product are become product for their very important. Thank you very much.